going to have to go to the stuff for a rattle, I'm afraid, because uh, I'm going to have to go out and leave here at about 20 past uh, and get back to town. I've got a day job still. Um, would, therefore, would it be okay? For, should I take some questions of my own at the end of this? Would that make sense? And then you can talk to the other guys afterwards. Okay. I've never been to Hawksman before. And all I know about this site and the work going on comes from, really from the South Cambridge website. I've never seen any of you as patients. I can't say whether anybody seems to have anything to do with the site or work. All I can do is to take you through the facts as I see them and how they may apply to you. Now, for thousands of years, we all had what's called wilderness mentality or a cowboy mentality. Meaning that when you make a mess of your camp, you just move on to another one. Then there was one thing that more than any other probably did most to change that, which was this image from Apollo 8, the first shot of our planet from space. We suddenly realized, wow, it's not actually that big, is it? And sadly, this was about the time that the wilderness mentality really did become unsustainable as well. Not only are there so many more of us on the planet now, but we're producing much more waste, and that waste is much, much more toxic. 150 years ago, waste was mainly wood, paper, fabric, that sort of stuff, you know, you throw it away and it, it goes away. Now, you've got heavy metals, toxic pollutants, radioactive materials, so on and so forth. Well, you know, a lot of them here, in fact. And they don't go away. That's the problem. Most of the chemicals released into the environment, and most of the ones in this site, are fat soluble, they're not water soluble. But most of the tests that people do on them are based on blood. So you get them to say, half life of this chemical in the body is 48 hours or two weeks or whatever. Yes, in the blood it is, but in the fat, it will stay there for years and years. And when Chemicals like that don't get excreted and they accumulate in the body, it tells you that we're not designed to handle them, basically. And with chemicals like that, any toxic effects that they possess are maximized because of the extended period of exposure. So the longer it's around in your system, the more chance it's got to do you harm. That's why I, we can detect them in a fact sample years afterwards. I've been banned for years. I recently tested uh, an eminent ecological campaigner who'd only eaten organic for about 30 years and he was shocked to find that he had quite high levels of these sort of things in his fatty tissue. The reason is that he got them 30 or 40 years ago before he went organic and so forth. And they're still there. They do stick around. What opened my eyes to all this was when I briefly, about 15 years ago, I worked in Central Asia. And the original brief I had was to assess the nutritional status and advise on, advise on food security and that kind of thing. But it soon became clear that chemical pollution was a far greater problem. The whole uh, countries you've got Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and uh, part of Kazakhstan. It's like a huge basin. And in the centre of it, with the rivers draining into it, is the Aral Sea. Well, it isn't anymore. It's the one that's disappeared. Because they recycled the water to grow cotton. The Soviets said, you will grow cotton, you will put tons and tons of pesticides on. And they had to put a report in every year saying, yes, we grew this much cotton, and yes, we used this many tons of pesticides. So, so when you put it into, put these pollutants into a, a place like that, they don't go away. There's nowhere for them to go. They just recycle through the system. It's just like an island, really, like us. And so, sorry, let me go back. Uh, so you can see, this is, these are population figures. The ones for cancer and so forth is, is difficult to say, 20% or whatever, that kind of thing. But 90% of the population had some sort of gastritis or esophagitis in some areas. 25 to 30 percent of adults had heart disease, and one third of people had toxic hepatitis, i.e., they had liver damage from the chemicals that's going on. 
And there is evidence, and this is an old slide, and uh, it, I don't know, you could, we could be more precise now, but in this thing, the dotted lines show where there's provisional evidence that chemicals can cause this disease. The solid lines show that there's clear proof that it does. So it is clear that chemical exposure can cause cancer, neurological diseases like Parkinson's and hyperactivity, birth defects, allergies, lung damage, emphysema, and autoimmune diseases like lupus. Right. But why doesn't it cause it in everybody? Well, the answer is that it depends on how much of the detoxifying enzymes a person has. This lab study looked at uh, how much of the enzyme uh, cholinesterase, which, uh, not sorry, not cholinesterase, paroxinase, uh, which is one of the major things that breaks down certain pesticide type molecules, how much of it people have. And basically, if you've got a good level, then 100% is good activity. If you've got a good level, you get a 10% reduction. If you've got a bad level, you get a 90% reduction in that enzyme. So it knocks off 90% of that sort of function. Right? And the enzyme level depends mainly on your genes. Now, uh, so I'll try not to get too complicated with this. But uh, you remember you've got two copies of every gene, one from the other, one from the father. So for an enzyme like this, where there's a variation that means you just don't produce any functioning enzyme. And there's a lot of those around, a lot of different ones around. Either you've got two good copies of the gene, or you've got one good copy, you've got no good copies. And one UK study <coughs> by a lady in London called uh, Mackenzie Ross looked at farming populations and uh, found that they split roughly 50-40-10. 50% had two copies, good enzyme activity, good protection from these chemicals. 40% had one copy and therefore about half protection. 10% had none, so no protection. So effectively you can say, you guys on that side, you're fine. You can go, you don't really need to tell you, won't get any effects. You guys, you're stuffed, I'm sorry. Jesus. Okay. It's far more complicated than that, of course, because all these studies are done on single chemicals and try to eyes like that. I mean, that's how science works. You get every other variable the same, and you just alter the the one chem. You introduce the uh, chemical, or you don't, or you give the person the drug, or you don't. Okay, that is the, the only way it can work, really. But 